I'm honored to be here today to join all of you here on World Refrigeration Day. You know, Michelangelo, the Italian Renaissance thought leader, once said that the greater danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. And that's exactly why we're all here today at Cold Chain for Life Conference, which is to aim high and to set big goals. So my congratulations to all the organizations involved in hosting and supporting this important dialogue on food safety and security and public health. Now to open things up on a topic of critical importance to all of us, and that's diversity and inclusion. Diversity was actually the theme of last year's World Refrigeration Day. And now more than ever, we must foster an inclusive society to help solve the world's major challenges. Personally, I'm proud to work for a company that does not tolerate discrimination in any form, but there's still work to do. And I encourage all of us to make a commitment to change. Together, we must listen and take action to make meaningful progress for all humans and to create a truly inclusive environment globally. And that's well aligned with our goal here at Carrier, which is to preserve, protect, and extend the world's food supply and medicine for all, a responsibility we take very seriously. Now, turning to my remarks today, I wanna to focus on three key aspects of the cold chain all of which are affecting us now and will continue to do so well into the future. So first, I wanna talk about the impact of COVID-19 and global industry trends. Second, food waste and greenhouse gas emissions. And third, building a more connected cold chain. So as COVID-19 shines an even brighter spotlight on getting food and medicine to those most in need, the demand for sustainable cold chain technology has never been greater. We see issues related to food system resiliency being exposed in developed countries that we've seen accustomed to seeing in developing nations. In the US, for example, the demand for food assistance is rising faster than many food banks can keep pace with, while grocery stores have less unsold inventory to donate to food banks because customers have stocked up on essentials, leaving some shelves completely bare. Now turning to life sciences, a key element in battling this pandemic and where strict temperature compliance is critical in the delivery of test kits, clinical trial materials, and vaccines. Here too is a result of COVID-19. We can see the weak links that have merged throughout this part of the cold chain. So to better understand and explore these problems, we've developed a white paper in the spirit of World Refrigeration Day that reimagines an evolving cold chain. It's available now on our website, and it focuses on the importance of the cold chain being extensive and flexible enough to withstand increased stress and remain stable and reliable in a post-pandemic world. Now, for those of you who access the white paper, we hope you find it interesting and thought-provoking. Now, while COVID-19 may have exposed these new challenges, there are other clear underlying industry fundamentals driving the cold chain. Now, let me give you a few examples. Population growth. Globally, population we know will increase by about 25% over the next 30 years. And we, like other industries, we will ride that growth curve. But unlike other industries, there is a greater societal demand for refrigeration to extend the world's food supply and to feed more people. Nearly 1 billion people go hungry every day. And that's because, in part, about a third of all the food that is produced worldwide is wasted when refrigeration is the answer. In fact, today, more than 50% of all the perishable food that is wasted could actually be eliminated, eliminated by simply using cold chain technology, and yet only 15% all perishable food that is produced is actually refrigerated. 
So as the world considers, how can it feed 9.7 billion people by year 2050? It increasingly points to the accelerated adoption of sustainable cold chain technologies. Urbanization, urbanization will also have an impact by 2050. It's projected that two thirds of the world's population will live in cities putting additional strain on the food chain as more people will be located further away from where food is physically produced. These trends will require more sustainable cold chain solutions and more advanced logistics to improve efficiency and reduce waste. A more efficient and sustainable cold chain will bring real benefits, including reduced food losses, lower greenhouse gas emissions associated with the production and supply of food, and improve food safety and quality by connecting consumers and producers more effectively. Now let's talk about cause and effect. There is a clear cause and effect relationship between the levels of greenhouse gas emissions and the levels of food waste. In fact, if food waste were a country, it'd be the world's third largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. In November of last year, I was privileged to take part and a food loss and waste roundtable in support of the Montreal Protocol hosted by the UN FAO. There, I signed the Rome Declaration, tying food loss reduction to sustainable cold chain development. By clearly connecting food loss and climate change, we believe there are opportunities for countries to gain access to UN climate funds that can be used to develop sustainable cold chains. And doing so could have a huge impact, given that those parts of the world with well-established cold chains experience perishable food losses as low as only 2%. This means there are big opportunities in emerging markets where the economic viability of the cold chain can be very compelling. And let me give you an example. So we worked with a local grower not too long ago in India who wanted to transport a citrus fruit he produced more than 2,500 kilometers over very rough roads and high ambient temperatures to new and underserved markets. Our study demonstrated that by using pre-cooling and transport refrigeration equipment, the grower was able to extend the shelf life of his produce from one week to two months, able to reduce his post-harvest losses by 76% and generate an attractive return on his investment. So just imagine, just imagine the possibilities if the gains experienced by this one grower could reach hundreds or even thousands of others globally. But you know, the key to a better cold chain is more than just utilizing physical equipment. Greater connectivity is also a vital piece of the future of the entire cold chain. In fact, customers are already now asking for more real-time information, data analytics, and prognostics. So we envision and we are working to build an end-to-end -end cold chain that will reduce food waste across the entire network. This will drive faster, intelligent, data-driven decisions related to temperature sensitive cargo and improve the efficiency and sustainability of supply chains. So to sum up, at Carrier, we take very seriously our responsibility to help preserve, protect, and extend the world's food and medicine supply. We believe a sustainable cold chain can reduce food loss, can feed more people, and can reduce the levels of greenhouse gas emissions associated with the production and supply of food. We know that the demand for sustainable cold chain technology has never been greater. We see that global trends will continue to drive cold chain growth and that digital connectivity will shape the future. So thank you all for your time today. Please enjoy the rest of the conference and World Refrigeration Day. Steve, I'll now turn the event back over to you. Thank you all.